I've been keeping a close eye on Box for about nine years and it's evolved a lot over that time. And I know many of you are curious to see how good it currently is. And that's what we are here to find out as we take a fresh look at the cloud storage solution with this Box review. I'm going to break down everything you need to know. We're talking privacy, security, features, the whole package. And hey, stick around till the end where I'll give you my honest take on whether Box is worth your time and obviously your money. I'll break down exactly who Box is for or if you should be shopping elsewhere instead. And don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon for more tech reviews and tips. Now, let's dive right into what many consider the most critical aspect of any cloud storage service, and that is security and privacy. After all, what good is convenient storage if you can't really trust it with your data? Box takes security seriously using AES 256-bit encryption for files at rest and in transit. This is the industry standard, so no complaints here, but here's where it gets interesting. Box offers a feature called Box Key Safe, which gives you complete control over your encryption keys. This means that even Box can't access your data without your permission. As good as this sounds, there's a catch. Key Safe is only available as a paid add-on for the higher tier plan. So that's the Business Plus and the enterprise plan. So if you're on a lower tier business plan or personal plan, well, you'll have to trust Box with your encryption keys. It's a bit like being offered a super secure safe, but only if you pay extra to hold the key yourself. Now, when it comes to privacy, honestly, Box's approach is a mixed bag. First off, Box is refreshingly transparent about their data collection practices. They collect information in three different ways, directly from you, automatically through your use of their services, and sometimes from third parties if you've given permission. Now, what exactly are they collecting? Well, it's primarily data about how you use Box and the devices you're using to access it. This includes things like your activity on the platform and the type of device that you're using. Box says this data collection is to improve their service and provide a better user experience, of course. But let's be real, information is currency and you can expect some marketing materials being sent your way as well. On the plus side, Box allows you to update your preferences directly in your Box account. For example, you can choose whether to receive promotional communications or share personal information with Box integrations. However, it is worth noting that some data is collected automatically and can't be opted out of. This includes Box automatically collecting personal information through your use of Box services. So you're not entirely in the driver's seat when it comes to your data. Now, Let's talk about data sharing. Box states that they may share information with trusted third parties. They don't provide a list who these third parties are, which makes me raise an eyebrow. I really like to know who may get their hands on my data. On the compliance front, Box does shine. They adhere to GDPR regulations, which is put in place to ensure users have control over their data. And if you work in healthcare, for example, good news, Box is fully HIPAA compliant. And if you're in government, more good news, Box is FATRAMP authorized, so you can keep those files on lockdown. One of Box's standout features is Box Zones, which allows you to specify where your data is stored geographically. Whether you need your data in Europe, in Asia, Canada, or Australia, Box has you covered. This is great for giving you power over where your data is stored and how it's handled. The bad news is that this feature is only available to higher tier plans. So if compliance is a major concern for you, be prepared to get a more expensive plan. Box also has tools that can level up your productivity. One standout tool is Box Notes, their native note-taking app. Here at CloudWords, we use Google Docs for our editorial work, and honestly, Box may not replace it, but it does a pretty decent job even for those who want to take more like professional-looking documents. Plus, you can create, edit, and share your documents right in the web browser, which is super convenient. 
Box Notes comes with pre-made templates for things like agendas and project plans. And while these templates aren't going to replace a dedicated project management software, they're a nice touch for quick work within your team. And if you find yourself using a particular format often, you can save it as a custom template. And for more info about Box Notes, check out our article on CloudWords in the description box below. Let's talk about file sharing and collaboration because Box does a great job here. Sharing files is pretty straightforward. You can either create a shareable link or add email addresses directly. Pretty standard stuff so far though. But Box gives you granular control over your shared content. You can set links, link expiration dates and add password protection. Plus you can track who's accessing your shared files and also for how long. Box also offers a feature called Box Sign, which lets you send and receive requests for digital signatures. This is great for businesses that deal a lot of with a lot of contracts or official documents. However, it's worth noting that the availability of Box Sign varies depending on your plan. For example, the free plan allows only for five docs to be e-signed per month. But on the other hand, if you go for the eSign feature, then it could replace a potentially more expensive solution for you down the line, which then saves costs in your business. Now let's dive into the user experience. Box's interface is clean and intuitive, but I'll be honest, at first glance, it can feel a bit overwhelming. There's a lot of information packed into the homepage once you start adding files and folders, but don't let that scare you off. After a bit of exploration, you'll find that everything is logically organized, so stick with it. Box offers also desktop apps for Mac and Windows. Sorry, Linux users. Let me tell you about Box Drive. It's like having a secret passage between your cloud storage and your computer. You can access all your box files right from your Mac OS Finder in Windows Explorer without sucking up your local storage. And it plays nice with Microsoft Office 365 and Adobe. Even when you're offline, you can still view and edit your files. And once you're back online, everything syncs up perfectly. Let's shift our focus a bit more towards the mobile side of things, the mobile app. And I've got to say, it's it's pretty solid. It's it's really logically um, lined up with what you would expect in a mobile app. You can basically view hundreds of file types, share them securely, and even save them for offline access while you're out and about. But here's the feature that I find really useful. You can use your phone as a scanner. Just snap a pic of a document, the app turns it into a PDF, and bam, it's uploaded straight to Box. You can search it, and you can use it, and you can really fine tune it to your way. Okay, let's break down Box's pricing structure. They offer both personal and business plans. The personal plans start with a free option that gives you 10 gigabytes of storage, which is decent for basic use. And if you need more space, their personal pro plan ups that to 100 gigabytes for around $11 per month when paid annually. For businesses, prices start at around $5 per user per month for the business starter plan, which includes 100 gigabytes of storage. But here's the thing, this plan is limited to a maximum of 10 users. If you need more than that, you'll have to upgrade to a pricier plan and with 11 users that can really add up. I've got to be honest here. Box really isn't the cheapest option out there. For comparison, Dropbox's business plans start at $15 per user per month for five terabytes of storage. So if you're in a tight budget, you might want to shop around and see if there's something else for you in there. But price, obviously, as you might know, isn't everything, right? So let's talk about what you get for your money. One of Box's standout features is its extensive list of third-party integrations. We're talking over 1,500 apps, including popular apps like Office 365, Google Workspace, and obviously Slack. This means you can blend Box into your existing workflow, which can be a huge time saver and for some, worth the price. So it depends where your business is at and what stage, Box might just be the right thing for you. Moving forward in the fast fashion, I'm going to share Box's speed performance because let's face it, nobody likes waiting around for files to upload and download and be synced and whatnot. In our tests, Box performed pretty well. It took about eight minutes to upload a five gigabit folder and about the same time to download it. That's not the fastest we've seen, but it's certainly respectable and shouldn't slow you down in day-to-day -day use. 
But here's something to keep in mind. Box doesn't support block level syncing. This means that if you make a change to a large file, Box has to upload the entire file again, not just the changed parts. If you frequently work with large files, this could potentially eat into your bandwidth. I mean, imagine uploading that 4K video project every time you make an edit. Yikes. <laughs> Far from being a time saver in my book. All right. Let's wrap this up here. Is Box the right storage solution for you? Well, that depends on your needs. If you're a business looking for a feature-rich platform with strong security and compliance options, Box is definitely worth considering. And its collaboration tools and also its third-party integrations are top-notch and features like Box Sign can be really useful for those managing contracts and things like that. And it could I'm saying it could replace other tools in your business arsenal that you're already paying for. So in the end, even though the storage might seem a little expensive, on the other hand, you might chop up a few dollars per month on those extra software that you pay on a monthly basis in your other business areas. Personally, I've been following Box CEO Aaron Levy on LinkedIn for a while, and he, how shall I put it? He makes it really clear that Box will have a big focus on AI in the coming years. As probably any company that you follow these days says they're gonna focus on AI, but yeah, I think they really take it seriously because obviously they deal with a lot of data. They deal with your data. They have a lot of data where it's pretty useful to use AI, right? Yes, they promise to keep your company's data safe and it's certainly something that you should keep an eye out for when you use Box.com. AI can help your organization, your business to be more productive, but it also comes with downsides when it comes to data integrity. So just some food for thought there. If you're an individual user or a small team on a budget, you might find better value options elsewhere. And we've dozens of videos for you guys in the channel. The limited functionality of the desktop app and the lack of private encryption on lower tier plans are also worth considering, something I hope Box would improve in the near uh, future updates. But what can I say? Ready to box up your data with Box? <laughs> <laughs> or are you eyeing other options? And speaking of options, if you're still in the fence, check out our best cloud storage video or read through in-depth article that I'll leave in the description box as well. Let me know in the comments what you end up doing. And hey, if you found this review helpful, drop your thoughts in the comments below as well. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more tech reviews and insights. Until next time, see ya.